كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة منه ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما او بعض يوم قالوا ربكم اعلم بما لبثتم فابعثوا احدكم بورقكم هذه الى المدينه الى المدينه فلينظر ايها ازكى طعاما فلياتكم برزق منه وليتلطف ولا يشعرن بكم احدا انهم ان يظهروا عليكم يرجموكم او يعيدوكم في ملتهم ولن تفلحوا اذا ابدا وكذلك اعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا ان وعد الله حق وان الساعه لا ريب فيها وان الساعه لا ريب فيها اذ يتنازعون بينهم امرهم فقالوا ابنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم اعلم بهم قال الذين غلبوا على امرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغلبة اللهم اجعل جمعنا خيرا وجعل جمعنا
the Muslim youth need to really look at within the context of what's happening in the whole world where to also position themselves. It requires that we understand current situations, what are the challenges that confront us, and how do we surmount such challenges. That is where the issue of strategy comes in. Um, from left, right, up and down, the Muslim community in Ghana and elsewhere in the world is confronted with a myriad of problems. Where we are is not where we belong, and for us it's unacceptable. But that's how we can really absorb ourselves and get out of the current, in quotes, messy situation or unacceptable situation in which we find ourselves. By some intelligent approach, understanding the situation, creative uh, understanding of the issue, and, and bringing our solution to the problem. I think that is the context within which we appreciate that team that have been selected, strategic plan for the CFR selected group for Ghanaian Muslims. It's so necessary. Luckily, we have somebody who is a member of uh, the Girls Academy, the young person, and I'm excited and inspired that today is this same young people, not me, the old faces who come to tell me what we think is right, but that the young people themselves that have the opportunity now to tell us a few things uh, that we can also make, make one or two additions. What is happening in the world today, from Tunisia down to Libya, to Egypt, to Bahrain, and to Yemen, it tells us a lot about what the youth can do. And I think that the, the, the area we need to really appreciate the value of the young people and what they can do, the better for us. And I'm so happy that I've been given the chance to, uh, in the first of the series of lectures for this year, some other season, uh, to be the chairman. And I want to say that I accept it fully, and I hope that you'll give me all the cooperation. Uh, let me end up on the note that I actually felt disappointed, although, uh, even as we think about strategy and what we need to do to push our forward, attitude in itself is one of the pain of our, of our far growth and forward forward in the as a community. The time is of, of essence, and I believe that it's a very important forum, the topic is very important, and we need a lot of time for the man to dilate and talk very well for us to make contributions. But as it is now, we have to become present. So I want to, I want to encourage you, this one is the first in the series. Subsequent ones, let's say if it's 9 o'clock, especially you, the young people. Um, so yeah, I'm calling the young people because some time ago I was also on, on your side. I'm, I'm now more than 50 years, so I, I consider myself among the elders. So please, next in the series, we say 9 o'clock, at least the members of the academy themselves, 9 o'clock shut them to be here. So even with them, you know, we can start the lectures so that we can have more time. So, thank you so much for the opportunity. I think that we can now go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, special guest of honor, Honorable Alassan Akon. Our distinguished guest from Turkey, IHH. Distinguished guest, the Iranian Consular in the person of Mr. Abbas Ali Aswari, Chair President of the Ghana Muslim Academy Board of Patrons, Dr. Dr. Rafiatu Amma. Ladies and gentlemen in Islam, members of the media fraternity. I welcome you all with the Islamic greetings of peace, tranquility, and fraternity to the 13th annual MK Mujahid Ramadan lectures by the saying of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Matters, I want to be very brief in my welcome address. <coughs> On an occasion like this, it's very important to give a short history of the Ramadan lectures. The MA Mujahid Annual Ramadan Lectures began as Annual Ramadan of Sale in English, 
which at that time was the first of its kind. Either to all the sale in the month of Ramadan has been done in our local languages. The Ghana Muslim Academy therefore thought it necessary to begin to do the Yosir in the lingua franca of the country, which was English, so that we can be able to target the Muslim professionals and intellectuals who, for one reason or the other, may not be able to
Kamza. He is the last general secretary of the National Academy, former chairman of, of the Constitu uh, Constitutional Committee, the University of Cape Coast. He is also an educational consultant and tutor with the CEO of the Business Management Consultant, the former assistant lecturer at this University of, of Ghana. So our speaker has uh, a lot of credentials under his lips. His pedigree is quite impressive, and uh, we are hoping that we are going to really be treated to a very insightful, a very interesting, educative, and informative lecture on this very, very important topic of social justice. So our our speaker is um, um, Brother Abdul Rashid Sambo, and I hope that we welcome him with a big after bill to inspire him to give us another exciting. Please recognize, ladies and gentlemen, in the Alhamdulillah, Banat Madugu, Banat Tafino, Banat Tafiro, indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and seek His forgiveness and help. We seek refuge with Allah. From our souls, no true God except Almighty Allah without a partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his art, servant, and messenger. Today's topic is strategic planning, a panacea for accelerated growth for Muslims in Ghana. In discussing this topic, ladies and gentlemen, Strategic planning for Muslims in Ghana today, certain preliminary remarks ought to be made concerning the position of Islam in this pre colonial geographical entity, politically called Ghana and its associated members. A time it was in some parts of this country when Islam comprehensively governed the life of the people. Everything at that time was being done within the framework of Islam. Muslim scholars were aligned to their responsibilities, moving from one town to another, spreading the religion of Allah, promoting the Islamic education, and purifying the society from corruption and kufr. Without exaggeration, that time could be marked as the golden period of Islam in Ghana. However, with the colonialist invasion of this country, the system changed. The tempo with which Islam was progressing was halted. This was done through numerous measures, notably, but certainly not exclusively, modification of the Sharia, dedication of Arabic and Islamic education to the background. Unfortunately, many Muslims who should know better have been taken undue consolation in the divine assurance that Allah will perfect his life. That assurance is to the effect that Islam will remain and will be immune from various conspiracies to distort his is strategic planning Islamic or is it a bit of innovation? It needs to develop a clear strategy in our community. We all know that the organization within our territory needs to have a strategy that is founded. We also know that there is no clear direction in what your mosque or Islamic institution does. You have suggested your, that the organization rethink what it is doing. Alex do a lot of suggestions to the Islamic society, but none is adhered. Ladies and gentlemen, Others will also ask if strategic planning is Islamic at all after all these suggestions. Maybe it's not Islamic. That is why their advices are not being taken. Or if it is Bida, as you ponder over this question that I'm throwing to you, you will definitely recall some facts. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to embark on a journey to know whether it's Islamic or Bida. The question is, we're going to look at strategic planning in the Bible. 
the Quran and Sirah. Even before the Quran was revealed, we find biblical support for strategic planning. And like Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, that is Moses, a consummate strategist who led the nation of Israel out of Egypt, grappled with his role as a leader, and succeeded. His father-in-law, Shuai, in the Bible, is, is known as Jethro, and stood his life and taught him strategic human resource planning. In teaching him strategic human resource planning, he pointed out to him how to manage his work by delegating part of it according to a well-established hierarchy. Further in the Bible, each of Israel's 12 tribes had separate areas in their town into repentance by placing a drinking cup in one of his brothers saddle bag and accusing them of death. He prompted them to admit their real crime and dealt with their past meetings. This strategic awareness shown by the prophet is but a reflection of planning of the supreme strategist, the one whose message they were spreading. Repeatedly, the Quran reminds us that Allah is the best planner. I repeat, even though today's topic is about strategic planning, the Quran is reminding us that don't think that you can know it all. Always, irrespective of what you are going to do or do, remember the Almighty Allah is the best planner. For example, if you're going to write an exam, you work well, you strategize. You plan, even though you know that you're going to pass the exams, you must, at the long run, consult Allah and tell him that la illa then you can plan for you. Otherwise, that is what we call arrogance, rude, and all the other things associated with such behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, Allah talks about his plan in Quran 86, verse 50. All the signs of his perfect plan. In the Quran, he refers to careful crafting of the natural environment as one of his signs. His plan encompasses everything. No matter how perfectly one may plan, Allah is the final decider. If they can feel secure against Allah's plan, this is the quotation of the Quran. But no one can feel secure against the plan of Allah except those doomed to rule. Quran 7, verse 99. The Almighty Allah elaborated this extensively in the Quran. And in fact, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also supported this by saying that there is no intelligence greater than planning. There is no intelligence greater than planning. We are now going to look at the state of Islam and Muslims in Ghana today. A casual look at Islam and Muslims in Ghana today will show that Islam remains intact and strong in Ghana. That is a fact. Whilst Muslims are powerless, humiliated, and almost disgraced, I'm glaring and dichotomizing Islam from Muslims. Islamic principles are not being changed, they are there. But Muslims, are found want themselves. Strategic planning is an integral aspect of every human endeavor, with its historical and spiritual roots. As God Himself began in this creation with strategy and planning. With strategy and planning. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Muslims today are located in a situation where the language of strategic planning has become alien to us. The situation Muslims find themselves today has largely been delivered into by non-Muslims rather than Muslims themselves. The happy stances and the circumstances surrounding Muslims today is the handiwork of non-Muslims, but not Muslims. So there is a need for us to change the status quo. Where are the Muslims who are supposed to do the job? The vice grants of Allah that are supposed to guide people from straight. Are they not under the lock and key of the Kufar? That Muslims are 
being persecuted around the globe is no news to those that are concerned. The most sacrilegious murder of all time is what is taking place. The Kufar decide for us what to eat, drink, and discard. Our mode of dressing and education is not left undetermined. Ladies and gentlemen, Islam, are we forgetting the simple ideas which say that is a Adela Adukum for the Yakul Biyamini, or is a Sharifa Adukum for the Yashram Biyamini, Biyamini, for Ibn al Sharifan Yakul Bishimani, for Yashram Bishimani. Now, the order of the day is that when you see the catchment set, the best way that the West said we should use is to put the fork that we're going to put in our mouth at the left hand. When you do otherwise, you are described as uncivilized, primitive. You don't know what's happening. Village man. And you quickly change your stance because the West are deciding what is right. I hope we are getting this play. And the mode of dressing that we're talking about and education, even in Ghana, the war on education is not for Muslims alone, it's for Africans generally. We have a situation in the area to point Islamic progression, they make sure that Muslims see every morning when they go to school at the primary level. Of course, we call it psychological revolution, orientation, where the child knows no one but someone else, be it Christ or something. You see, children like singing is a nice strategy by those who want to achieve their aims. In the area of dressing, some Muslims are not proud of Islamic dressing, of course. In a recent research on Islamic dressing, the outcome shows that when you dress provocatively, you are likely to attract men for the sake of it. You are likely to attract men, not for marriage. They can go out with you for several years because you are beautiful, and I call that type of dressing attractive calamities. <laughs> but when it's time for marriage, that guy will show that something that cannot be presented in the home and go for a well-dressed woman. Ladies and gentlemen, this advice goes to the women. They must know that if they want proper marriage, then by their parents, first and foremost, what we can see in you is not about what is related. Of course, I have to see you. And if you are not well dressed, of course, it depends. When you dress provocatively, I'll be attracted negatively. When it's time for me to get married, I will look for somebody who has hijab eyes. We put it. Strategic planning is an organization's process of defining a strategy or direction and making decisions on allocating its resources to pursue a strategy, including its capital and people. Various analytical techniques can be used in achieving this. These include the SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T, SWOT analysis. The SWOT represents strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It means we must sit down and look at our strengths. We look at our weaknesses, we look at the opportunities available, and also consider the threats. There is a saying that an optimist sees opportunity in every threat, so the threat itself is an opportunity. If my younger brother, whom I'm older than by 10 years, all of a sudden gains admission to the university, of course, to a greater extent, it's a form of threat. To uh, the respect I'm going to get in the house. But if you do that threat, I must get an opportunity. It means that I must double my efforts at least to also be in the university. If I used to read two hours a day, now I need to read about six hours because the pace at which my younger brother is moving is too fast. We also have other analytical techniques, like the first analysis, where we consider political, economic, social, and technological. Political in the sense that we use our political situation. It's not very, very unfortunate in Ghana that the political laws we have here, the Muslims around there, are countable. They are just, we can count.
counted. So always, now and then, we always rely on the same people because they are very few. When you delve into the statistics in Parliament, you will agree with me that the percentage of Muslims in Parliament is insignificant. When you look at the hierarchical structure of Ghana, where we have the president, in the absence of the president, we are supposed to have vice president. There is no Muslim. In the absence of the vice president, we have the speaker of the house. She is not a Muslim. In the absence of the Speaker of the House, the next person is the Chief Justice. She is not a Muslim. Here we are. I'm very sure, even if non Muslims come and stand for, stand for elections in Islamic territories, they might win the elections. Because we are not strategic in nature. You don't need somebody to come and tell you that, do this. We have experiences of international strategies where Americans, when they travel, send back the money back to America. When the Turkish people came to Ghana, I was very muffled. I was with them for the past three days. We went to Cape Coast, we did everything. In fact, when we went to eat, they 